because there was such a huge success when it came to the past life regression, and I wanted to do something that worked, that I wanted to learn more about this method. So I studied with Dr. Brian Weiss a long time ago, and I got really good at his method, and I did that for many years. And I thought, this is so fantastic. Breastman Cosme, and this is your superior self. Ah, uh, Sarah, it is 38 degrees, I think, here. Uh, you're in key the Keys. Um, I'm sure it's a little bit warmer. How are you doing this evening? I'm fantastic. It's like a balmy 75. Ugh. Palm trees are swaying right outside so, my window. <laughs> so jealous. So jealous. You um, won't be jealous in the heat of the summer, though. You know. I know, right? Um, love the Keys. Love south florida i think you have like you had the best setup i was looking at your website and some of the pictures and images of like the blue water down there are just phenomenal so like to be down in, in that energy and do the work that you do yeah. must be phenomenal it is there is a very special energy especially where my office is located mm -hmm. it's like 90 it's um i don't know if i would say 90 degrees i asked jimmy blanchett i'm not sure if you've heard of him to figure out according to my coordinates where my office was located and it was like in the direct same line as the great pyramid so it was really interesting to find that out wow to find that out to find that to even think uh, like in relationship to where your coordinates are with that concept i mean from where you're at now from where you used to be it has to be like a huge huge leap right like it you is. started out in psychology. Like I can relate to that because mm -hmm. I'm going through that right now. How did you find hypnosis? Well, by accident, completely by accident. I mean, it started out for me that I had a lot of problems. I mean, I was just somebody that always had problems when I was younger. I had, I was overweight and I had all kinds of phobias and fears and I had OCD and I had like, I was like a hypochondriac super manifester. People had problems and they told me about their problems. I could even test their problems so quickly for myself. It was like, um, you know how some people complain about being too skinny and people are like, oh gosh, what a problem. I was like a super manifester, but it didn't work out for me in any way. I mean, I would manifest all these terrible things for myself, not knowing what was going on with me. And I had so many issues. I mean, I couldn't sleep at night because somebody told me about having sleep problems and just so many problems that that's how I got into therapy myself. So I got into therapy myself because I wanted to fix myself. And it was nice to talk to somebody, but I never felt like I got better, really. Mm -hmm. It was just nice. Like it was comfortable. But I didn't know that there were any modalities, any other modalities out there. So I chose psychology and I wanted to become a psychologist because I wanted to understand everything that we had as far as like knowledge. I wanted to learn it all so that I could help people in the best way that I could. Mm -hmm. But something happened to me that changed my life when I went to college. So a couple months after I went to college for the first time, I came back home to my family's house. It was Thanksgiving break. So I'd just been away for a few months. Here it is November and I'm home for the first time. And when I walked through the door of my parents' house, there's a mirror and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror and I just was shocked. You know, in the dorm rooms, they have these very small mirrors. I hadn't really looked at myself. I hadn't really thought about anything other than like studying and partying and doing whatever, you know, you do in college. I just hadn't really thought about anything. But when I looked in the mirror, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm completely different. And as I stared at myself, I realized I had lost like 20 pounds. I'm not joking. I'd only been away 
for a little bit. And I was still eating like pizza and at the time drinking beer, you know, my diet was mm -hmm. worse. And I noticed in the mirror that I had forgotten to have all my problems while I was away. So it dawned on me, oh my gosh, I had changed my environment and I had changed my thoughts and this changed my life. It was such an aha moment, I'll never forget it. And it really changed my life because now I understand that it's my thought patterns that create these habits. So I don't you know, have these issues anymore because I understand how to work my own thought patterns, if that makes sense. But I continued with college because I still really wanted to help people. And after I graduated, I had this internship before going to graduate school where I would counsel people and I was in charge of giving them their medication because I had learned all about medication. I was medication certified at the time. Um, and I just was sh kind of shocked and a little bit disappointed because I felt like is this really all there is? I mean, this is after all this schooling and I'm about to go to graduate school. This is all we know as far as what to do to help people with mental illnesses. It just didn't seem right to me. I knew that there was something off. There must be something more is what I kept telling myself. And I didn't see anybody get better. I mean, this was just my own personal experience. I saw people being tested on. I saw kind of firsthand the pharmaceutical industries, what they were doing, how they were using these people instead of helping them. And I just didn't want a part of it. So I quit. And it was years later that I got into hypnosis, but I'm a perfectionist. You know, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's bad. I don't know. But I needed to be a master hypnotist before I started practicing on people you know, before I started charging and having my own business. So in order to become a master hypnotist, which I became a master hypnotist in 2009, you had to do lose weight, quit smoking and past life regression. So I wasn't really into past life regression. I didn't know if I believed in it because I really didn't have a spiritual background whatsoever. I mean, I was young. I wasn't, it was just so foreign to me, but I had to do it in order to become a master hypnotist. And I was really mostly interested in, you know, becoming a good hypnotist, lose weight, quit smoking. And, you know, I even thought it was fun. Maybe I would do stage hypnosis down the future, down the road. I don't know. But um, it was obvious to me right away that there was something that was actually working with the past life regression hypnosis that wasn't quite the same with the other kinds of hypnosis, because lose weight, quit smoking was great, but it was like putting a bandaid on something. It wasn't getting to the root cause or the root issue, but doing a past life regression was really helping these people because I had to do like 200 sessions. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. So um, I, I decided because there was such a huge success when it came to the past life regression and I wanted to do something that worked, that I wanted to learn more about this method. So I studied with Dr. Brian Weiss a long time ago, and I got really good at his method. And I did that for many years. And I thought, this is so fantastic. And then after many years of doing that, I just felt like there was something that I couldn't find that I was missing. Like there was more, I just knew there was more, but I didn't know what it was. So at the time I was watching the show called Channeling Eric, where there were all these psychic mediums and I decided to hire one and her name was Emma, Emmanuel McIntosh. And, um, she, and her reading was so funny because as soon as we got into the reading, she said, oh, Sarah, this is the easiest reading I've ever done. She said, most people have different future potentials and, you know, there's so many different ways that they can go, but you're, I mean, this is the easiest reading. This is so clear. You feel like something's missing because you're supposed to do this method called Dolores Cannon's method. I had never heard of her. I didn't know who this Dolores Cannon person was, but Emmanuel said, yeah, you're going to get really good at this method and you're going to work your way from the bottom to the top even, and you'll be teaching it 
and you'll be writing books and you'll be about this all over the world. And I just, you know, thought, oh my gosh, this reading is terrible. <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought, oh, she must have me confused with somebody else. Um, and I, I didn't even look up this Dolores Cannon person because I thought, there's no way. She must have just thought, got me confused with maybe like the reading before or somebody else because I'm not a writer or a speaker or, you know, I don't even know this who this Dolores Cannon person is. So then it was months later that I just checked her out. I wanted to see who this Dolores Cannon person was just in case maybe I was really missing something. And as soon as I about her and I looked into her work, it instantly clicked with me. And sure enough, just like this, I worked my way up, became a level three. I taught, I assisted Julia all around the world before the quarantine, wrote books, and I'm speaking about my work all over the world. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into it. That's so amazing. Brian Weiss, I was, I was going to say that, like, I'm, I'm a big fan of his work, but his past life regression is more clinical though, right? Like, well, it's just a regular uh, progressive relaxation technique, although he does teach you a few like shock inductions. Um, I mean, he's fantastic and it's really amazing. He is extremely good at teaching. I don't, I don't think he's still teaching anymore, but he's, a, he's very good at with his method and it's a great method, but it's just a regular past life regression. So it's the main goal kind of session is to just bring to past life regression. Now, someone asked me an interesting question the other day. They said, how come in a lot of these regular past life regressions, the person doesn't remember another planet or remember being an extraterrestrial? And my guess would be is that the suggestion in the beginning is that it's clearly stated, now go back to another lifetime, you know, another lifetime here, basically. It's kind mm -hmm. of like limiting you to here. Whereas Dolores Cannon's method doesn't limit you at all. You just go back to another time, another place. Mm -hmm. So I think that could be why, because she leaves it open. She doesn't lead them in any way. Where you, whereas in a regular past life regression, sometimes you are led to another past life, sure. you know, here on earth, basically. I'm just so fascinated with it, right? Because I think it, what you're tapping into, what Dolores tapped into, is the collective unconscious that Carl Jung was talking about. Um, I mean, Freud dabbled in hypnosis. <coughs> Carl Jung was a student of Freud. I think um, you know Edgar Cayce's books, I think that has, it's very similar to hypnosis. Um, and you're tapping into this collective unconscious or or I think it's still the higher self almost, right? Like that place where that it has all the knowledge. Thing. Yeah. Right. So that's the main difference like between um, Brian Weiss's work and Dolores Cannon's work is that he goes strictly to past lives where Dolores's work does past lives too, but it also connects with that higher self, right? Exactly. That's the main goal of Dolores Cannon sessions is to get the client deep enough and regress them but really the goal is to access universal consciousness. And basically you can access it through anyone. I mean, when you go deep within anyone, you reach the same place and that is universal mm -hmm. consciousness. No matter what you want to call it, it's all the same place. Sure. That's and what I love true. about it. It's like coming from yeah, within us, right? Like it's not someone, exactly. someone else. It's not like I have to go someone to go <laughs> to someone who's a, a healer or a doctor or something and they're doing something to me. It's you go into a, a session and you become the thing that is healing yourself, right? You're connecting yeah. with that consciousness that has this ultimate, this knowledge and this power to, which is ultimately us anyway, connecting with right. the body and healing. Like, like it's so fascinating to me. It is. And, you know, it's interesting too, as you know, you do this work for a while, you realize it's so interesting how simple everything is. Like, it's just extremely simple. And we just make everything so complicated. I mean, so many times the higher self will be like, yep, that's that's healed. 
And it'll be something like cancer or something that a person's consciousness would think is totally impossible to heal or their back will completely straighten you. You'll hear the bones like click into place, you know, and all they did was just understand that they had this deep feeling of being unsupported their whole life. Mm -hmm. And that really they needed to support themselves or maybe they needed to let go of the sadness. And finally they were able to let it go. And then all of a sudden their healing happens. <clears throat> it's so incredibly simple mm -hmm. that it's like our consciousness wants to be like, wait, how is that possible? I don't like it to be so simple. I wanted it to be challenging. I wanted to really work hard for this, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. Do you, um, have you developed gifts like some people have that have become pr practitioners where you can kind of hear the higher self speaking to you, like in your left ear or something like that? Yeah, actually that is the ear that I usually hear. Um, most of the time. don't know. I'm not like a medium or anything like that. I just have noticed it that the questions will pop into my mind a lot of the time. And, and it's really weird because sometimes the questions will pop in on the left ear, but then if I feel a presence and they're talking to me, it's on my right ear. So, mm. you know, I really don't know, but, um, you know, I feel like it's the work that's special. Like, I don't feel like there's anything particularly special about me, you know, I'm just following along doing what I'm supposed to do, but it's the work that's so easy. And it just is, you know, that's special. Sure. <sighs> Talk about your first QHHT session, right? Or the one that kind of, you know, convinced you that this was <clears throat> real, that you were connecting with the higher self. Like, cause for me, I, I really want to pursue this, right? Like I want to be a practitioner uh -huh. in QHHT, but there's a nervousness in me, right? Like, cause let's just face it. Like I'm a, in, I'm an introvert, right? Like, so the, the requirements to step up to level one is like, you have to do like 25 free ones. So I'm like, or something like that. I got to look around and I'm, you know, I got to find 25 subjects to, yeah. to do this method on. And some of them might be skeptical, right? Like, so how do you walk in yeah. with the confidence to know that this is going to work and they're going to be able to connect with the higher self? You know, that's a really good question because I was very skeptical and it really took me a long time to believe it. Just being totally honest with you. But when you have that first session that blows you away and they're completely healed after it, how can you doubt it? You know, I mean, but to be totally honest with you, I still had trouble believing it even after the first time somebody healed themselves. Um, see, the thing was I switched from doing regular past life regression to QHHT. So I know would you, would you suggest someone to, to go, uh, either be a, a master hypn uh, hypnotist or would you um, refer them to go straight into QHHD? I mean, if I'm just going to be totally honest, I would say that I feel more comfortable having a hypnosis background, but this is only me personally. Um, I know plenty of people that don't have a hypnosis background at all. Like for instance, um, Suzanne Spooner is probably one of the best practitioners in the world and she doesn't have a hypnosis background. Either does Marilyn Dyke. I, I don't believe that she does. Um, it's just my own feeling of feeling like I like to have other tools for, you know, the unthinkable. Um, but I don't think it's needed. This, you know, this modality is so easy and it it's so it works so well that it's not needed. It's just something that I feel more comfortable having. Sure. What was the, the, the biggest healing that you were a part of that was like, it made you a believer, right? Like you didn't, you didn't, well, actually, you know what? You weren't a believer anymore. You just knew that this worked. I knew that it worked. I think, um, my life changed when I had my client Jen come in for a session <clears throat> because she was my friend. So I had been friends with her for 10 years before she had a session with me. I just needed somebody to regress and take their video submission to the level three class that I was taking because I live in Florida and all of a sudden it was going to be in Orlando and it, it wasn't like somewhere like Hawaii or somewhere far so I could actually go. And it, 
it just pops on to the schedule all of a sudden and there's only three spots so I was under pressure I had to find somebody to regress so I asked my friend Jen but I don't know why I asked her that sit at the playground oh my back on the internet yep. I lost um, it for a second yep um, every day after school, we used to sit at the playground and we used to watch our kids play. She was a teacher at the kids' school. So she was, I, I knew that she was not into any of the stuff because sometimes after my sessions, you know, I really wanted to talk about what an amazing session. And I would try to bring things up with her because she was there all the time and she was not interested. She was just very closed minded, scientific. You know, she was a history teacher at the kids' school. Um, did not believe in any of this stuff. I know because I would try to bring things up. So when I asked her, Hey, would you be my subject? I need somebody on the spot. I instantly regretted asking her because I thought, why didn't I just ask one of my open friends? Why didn't I ask somebody at the yoga studio or something? You know, I don't know why her name came into my mouth and I don't know why I asked her. But when I asked her, I said, all you have to do is just volunteer. I'm just going to do a session with you, but I'm going to videotape it and take it to this level three class. And I said, you know, but you might enjoy it because you can really find out who you are. You can find out your true purpose and you can even heal your body. If you have any issues, if you have any issues at all, you know, it's pretty easy to heal yourself in these sessions. And she just looked at me and she said, that's what you do because I haven't told anyone at the school, but I'm suffering from this brain condition called pseudotumor cerebri. And basically it's like this, the, um, the spinal fluid is flooding my brain and it's calling, causing severe headaches. And I can't see out of one eye and I'm working really closely with a team of specialists at the university of Miami. And they said with this heavy duty medication, I might have 20 more years left to live. Hmm. So I've been in this complete depression you know, she was only 32 at the time. And, you know, what kind of life sentence is that? Basically, you can say on this medication that makes you feel horrible and you might have 20 years left to live. So, you know, she hadn't told anybody because she had just recently found out. And so, and also it was just so devastating. She didn't really know if she was going to tell people what she was going to do. She was just going to take the medication and just suffer through it. So I was the first person from the school she told and she said, yes, I will definitely be your subject. I'll try anything because, you know, she had three kids at the time. So our first session was really very interesting because here's a, this closed minded person who I knew for 10 years. So I knew she wasn't into any of this stuff. And in her first session, she regresses back to this ancient lifetime where she lived as like this priestess in, um, in this ancient place called Lemuria. And it was the, her descriptions of this place were just astounding. I mean, the way she described the culture, the matriarchal society, um, just the how beautiful this island was with the waterfalls and just the birds and the flowers and everything. It was just so many details. And then she was describing in this past life that there were visitors that kept showing up because they were looking for something. And these visitors were very advanced. They came in these travel spheres and they were from this place called Atlantis. And eventually, since they couldn't get what they wanted, they took her as a prisoner and totally destroyed the whole civilization, her Lemurian civilization, with these massive tidal waves that they were able to create because they set off these atomic-like devices in rifts underneath the ocean. And it just completely sunk the entire continent and they took her as a prisoner and she spent 60 years in a prison in Atlantis. And so I asked her, her higher consciousness, you know, after the past life part, why did you show her this lifetime of all lifetimes? And they said, because her mission is to meet me and to uncover this information and share this important information with the world that the world had been waiting for it. And the time was right now because we've hit a point in our evolution where this information can finally be released. And our mission was to meet each other and uncover this information and share it with the world. So I asked her higher consciousness, 
well, why does she have this brain condition? And they said, well, it was the motivation to get her to see me because she was not into any of this stuff. She would never have agreed to be your subject if she didn't have some motivation. But now that she has, we can release it and she can, we can heal it. So after our first session, she went back to her team of specialists. And, you know, after our first session, she noticed she felt a draining, something like coming behind her eyes. And she just started to feel so good that she stopped taking her medication. So when she went to our team of specialists, she was a little worried what they were going to say because she hadn't taken her medication since, you know, our session. But when she went in for her um, medical update, they were astounded because she was healed and they didn't understand or couldn't really tell her why she was completely healed. But she told them, she said, oh, I know why I had this session. It was a QHHT session. And they just, you know, blew it off. They said, no, it's just called a medical a miracle. That's what it's called. So anyway, because we had this information that we needed to uncover this, this information, apparently, and share it with the world, which, okay, I, just to be totally honest with you, I've heard many things and I thought that's a nice story, but there was healing involved. So and I'm curious, I was curious, what is this information? What does you know, the higher consciousness want us to share with the world. And I told her higher consciousness, take us back to the beginning of the story that you want us to share with the world, the very beginning. So we can uncover it all and share it with the world. Now, I thought she was going to regress back to Lemuria and like, tell me all about her childhood, starting from the beginning. This is what I was thinking in my mind. And no, she didn't go back to her childhood in Lemuria and said she went back to another lifetime as a commander on an extraterrestrial ship crash landing on earth for the very first time. Hmm. Now, this is someone who does not believe in extraterrestrials. So I kept thinking, oh my gosh, what is she going to think about this? Because I knew she didn't believe in extraterrestrials because I had asked her a bunch of questions and I brought up the subject because, you know, like in QHHT, Sometimes <clears throat> people remember another lifetime as an extraterrestrial. In fact, not sometimes, it happens all the time. So I asked her what, how she felt about this. And she said she definitely didn't believe in them, that it made her uncomfortable. Hmm. So here she is remembering a past life, crash landing on Earth for the very first time as an extraterrestrial, not only just an extraterrestrial, a commander uh, of this uh, extraterrestrial ship. So she crash lands understands why they came to earth. They were, you know, missing some resources. They came to earth because earth is very, has a lot of this resource. And apparently it was this very special gemstone, this, these red crystals that the earth has <coughs> a lot of, and they were using these red crystals on our home planet to kind of create this um, enlightenment effect. So it was almost, it was very interesting. It was almost like, another realm that they create because they're they're mostly mental they've evolved to the point where they don't need to eat anymore where they are so advanced mentally that they can use their mind to create different things but they need they needed this gemstone to create this other realm it's other it was like another realm that you had to go through and then once you went through it you were never the same again because you were you would understand the secrets of the universe so as of course, I was very curious. I was like, what happens when you go through, you know, other realm or this, like, can you explain the secrets of the universe, you know? So she was starting to remember it. And she said, they're pulling this memory as fast as I'm trying to remember it. But basically, oh, hold on, my internet is unstable. <laughs> but basically, when you go through this vortex, you remember everything. It shocks you into enlightenment. You remember why you're here and what you're doing here. And essentially you remember that life is just a game. And this game has been going on for longer than anyone can comprehend in the aspect of time, because we're truly all just part of this ancient grouping of beings. And we've traveled from planet to planet and we evolve on that planet. And then we seed another planet, travel to that planet, and we keep going over and over. It's like a cycle, but it's not just the cycle that goes like this. It's a figure. It always folds up on itself and it, everything is happening in the now. 
but essentially you do all of this for the experience. And so it was really interesting and everybody had to go through this other realm to understand who they really were. And once you did that, you, there was balance, there was no need to compete with anyone because you realized that you were everyone you saw and that you were just, you know, reflections of one another. So they were running out of this resource. And if they ran out of this resource, they knew they would de-evolve. So since earth was so rich in this resource, they said they were going to seed earth. And then, you know, they were also going to inhabit earthly bodies and also, you know, grow their population. Essentially, we are extraterrestrial, you know. So essentially, they were going to have an experience on Earth while also having an experience on their home planet, like many other races do. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just really interesting because I thought we were going to uncover more about it. <laughs> Apparently, that was part of what the information was that we had to share. Sure. Oh, man, there's so much in there. Um, <laughs> but going to make going back to your point about the higher self speaking to you, saying that this is your path, right? This is your mission. What does that say about agency here, right? Like free will, like, are they guiding us? Are they directing us? Are they putting people, you know, in our path to help us evolve as consciousness? Like your friend, right? Yeah. She, the only reason yeah. why she had the I think it was the the brain tumor or cancer was so that she could meet you and go through this practice or modality to experience this and get this information out. So like, are there checkpoints? Are there jumping off points in our lives where we meet random people and that projects us into a different direction in our lives? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So we have free will, but it seems like we come in with different things that we really want to accomplish. So we use all these things. And then if you get off your path, you'll get some sort of issue to try to bring you back to your path. When you go against your trigger, it's everything in the universe resists it. Going along with what you know deep down to be true for you, your purpose, it's like smooth sailing completely. But like one example, I think of um, free will versus, you know, trying to do your own thing and going rogue is, you know, I had this client and she had this right shoulder injury. And so she came in for a session and her higher consciousness said, yes, we gave her that right shoulder injur injury. I said, why, you know, why would you give her this right shoulder injury? And they said, well, she just started this cleaning job. She's not supposed to do this clean, supposed to be a singer. That was her purpose that she came in to do, you know, sh she, her voice is so healed and she could really help so many people if she could just do her purpose and she, us if she had to give her a clear sign that she's not going down the right path and this is her sign we're just doing exactly what she told us to do and so we're not going to heal her shoulder unless she gets back on her path so i asked a bunch of questions what does she need to do and they said well everyone she knows is in a band all she has to do is start right now just start. There's places looking for people that could do what she does. It, she'll make enough money. She'll be fine. Mm. So I said, well, okay, can you heal, heal her shoulder right now for her then? So she got the message and they said, yes, only if she does what she's supposed to do. So I saw her in when Dixie, <coughs> excuse me, down, you know, down my street and she was in a sling. So I did, this is just a real example because so what happened? She said, oh, well, I just got nervous. I didn't want to stop the job because I had so many clients lined up and I didn't do the singing. I was just nervous. I just, I didn't know handle if I could do it. So I just kept doing the cleaning job. You know, now I need to get surgery. So I saw her again and went, because everybody sees each other at Winn-Dixie because it's a small island. I saw her again in Winn-Dixie and you know, she was in this like post-operative um, compression uh, garment on her shoulder and arm. And she just had the surgery. She said it was really successful, but it was still really painful. And now her left shoulder was hurting. So I just thought, you know, that's like a really good example how our bodies are helping us. Everything's helping. Everything in the universe aligned to our path. Do I think some things 
are random, yes, but I think designed so much for our lives. And if we don't, I mean, I do think you can choose basically whatever you decide, but it's hard if, if you're going against what you truly, truly know to be your purpose. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm just so fascinated by that, right? That's how the higher self communicates with us is through our bodies. But it, like people struggle and suffer every day with, with pain in their bodies and no one ever thinks about, oh, well, am I on my path? Like that's, that's like a, that's a thought that I would never have. Like if I get sick, right. Or right. if I have, I run a lot, right. So that it's not uncommon for me to have pains and aches and um, soreness in certain parts of my body. I would never think in my mind, my higher self is trying to communicate with me about maybe my yeah. path, maybe my tra you know trajectory, where I'm going. Um, that's just so fascinating to me. Like what, how do you, well, how do also, I go ahead? Well, also the body is a message too. So, I mean, it's such a tool that we've never been taught. I mean, we've never been taught this, that when you have an ache or pain, that it's actually something to help us. So if you just can quiet yourself and listen to whatever it's telling you, like you could even ask yourself, what is the root cause of this pain? You know, the very root cause. Is there something I need to understand about it? Is there something I need to learn about it? And then do you need it anymore? Has mm. it served its purpose? Do you need it to teach you something anymore? And then can it be released and healed? You know, because if it's something like, okay, I'll just use myself, for example. I got a little cold because I don't rest enough. <laughs> I know I need to take the time to rest more, but I wasn't listening. So I got a cold to force myself to rest. If we listen to ourselves, not perfect, but if we listen to ourselves and go inwards and find out what do I need to learn from this? And if you can get the message, then you can release it. I mean, we're not taught that, but really the body is working for us. It seems like such a foreign concept, right? Sure. Like it seems like you get any kind of ache and pain must go to the doctor, must go to someone else to tell me what's wrong with me when really it's an intuitive thing. Your body is telling you what you need to do and it's you that needs to listen to it because you're the one that ultimately will heal you. Mm -hmm. It puts the healing power back into your own hands, right? Like mm -hmm. what, um, have you found that since you become a QHHT practitioner that clients just come out of the woodwork with like for you looking for help? Um, you know, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm very blessed. I actually don't have any book schedule because I, I stopped at like February, 2024. I'm going to reopen. I just, I'm not sure like what I'm going to be doing in February, uh, you know, March, 2024 yet. Um, but I know that it's always a match whatever client comes to me, the higher consciousness has matched us. And I learned this a couple of years ago when I had this client that um, said that all her life, she, when she was going through really difficult times, she would see the numbers one, nine, seven, four, like she would open a book and it would be one, nine, seven, four. For some reason it would comfort her. And she had an apartment building that was like 1974. Everything was 1974. Now I'm 48. That's my birthday. So every, every, I mean, that's my birth date. So every time she kept saying that, I kept thinking, oh, that's really interesting. I wonder what, you know, what the higher consciousness is going to say about this. And the higher consciousness said, know this. I didn't tell her it was my birthday. The higher consciousness said, just to show her that this session had been planned ever since she was three years old, because that's my birthday, which I obviously knew. But um, I just, it was an interesting experience for me. Because I've known this, I started, this, but now it was totally proven. You know, these sessions are so set up. They're so divinely planned. Mm -hmm. Like that you can't have these sessions. There's such a match between the practitioner and client, or, you know, it's a match between many people that do healing modalities, or maybe all that do sure. healing modalities. 
just like you choose to do certain things in your life, you choose to do di different things and meet up with different people to help you along your path. Sure. That's like one of the, that's like one of the, the fears almost right to like pursuing this as a modality or like being a pr practitioner of this is like, where can I get the clients? Where will I be able to find the clients? Right? Like, will this work for me? I, I know it works for Sarah. She's obviously written books on it and she's now the leading authority on Atlantis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking on like platforms like Gaia about Atlant uh, Atlantis in, in your book, it's like, it's almost like imposter syndrome almost, right? Like, who am I to do this, right? But I feel like to your point about the universe, like setting this up for people, I, I'm kind of banking on that because like I'm reading a lot of the signs and I'm reading like pe the universe has put people in my, into my life that are pushing me in that direction or making me, me feel more comfortable about that decision. Because I've like, I've looked at many different hypnosis modalities, right? Uh, kind of similar to what you were speaking to before with Brian Weiss and they just don't resonate with me, right? Like their past life regression is great. I think it's awesome that you can do this, right? And it, and it heals the individual from whatever trauma they're going through, but like to really connect with the higher self and really do healing right then and there, and then find information out about the history of mankind and the planet. Like, I mean, yeah, that might be a little tough to verify some of that information, but if you have like... 20 different clients and maybe five of them who don't know each other are kind of saying similar things. That's like a 5% chance of like uh, it being outside of chance or, you know, like there's not a pattern there really. I mean, there is a, I guess there is a pattern there, but it's like a skeptic would say, Oh, that's just random. Right. But if you have like five people that don't know each other, like, and, and are saying the same things, it's kind of exciting, right? Like, cause you're on to something, like you found something. Well, the, I, I mean, I really love this modality because you can find out anything and you can help too. Well. I mean, I helped my son asses when he was 11 and now he's 14. He's, you know, healed his eyesight, helped my mom heal a bunch of things. I mean, I just feel like as soon as you, say to the universe, okay, I'm ready. Give me clients. They do so. I mean, there's really nothing you have to do. I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I never, you know, I self-published my books. I never did anything. The higher consciousness has an agenda and they want to get certain information out. And if you want to help in that process, they will help you do that. Mm -hmm. It's just whatever your intention is. Well to that point of you have books out, do you have a way of discerning the information that you receive from the higher self or like, as opposed to someone who's read your books and now is just repeating some of that material? Yeah, I only, so I don't use, um, paying clients. I only use clients that, um, or not clients. I use like certain people that I kind of test, <laughs> And they have to um, not, there's, I call them my hypnosis subjects. They can't read my books. <laughs> and also, you know, I don't like it when they have previous knowledge of any of this stuff. The best subjects to use for me are people like my first friend who didn't know any of this stuff. But also the way I discern things is I'll take a bunch of different people that don't know one another. Like what you just said. Like when I'm going to do a conference or something and say I have a certain topic, I'll use a bunch of people that don't know one another and I'll find out what they say on these certain topics. And then I'll use those clips. How would they all say the same things if this wasn't evidence, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty interesting when they describe the same exact details. How would they know these details? And then how would they know, you know, certain things what I find really interesting is just as an example, like people that have memories of being on like a, this is just very specific, a gray extraterrestrial ship, for instance, and they all describe it the same exact way, but consciously they have no idea about this ship. So how did they all explain in such detail what this ship was like from the inside. So I love doing stuff like that, like getting these little collections of, you know, people's recounts 
that match up completely with somebody else's. And I love just finding out secrets of the universe because I'm really curious, you know, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy things that really help me not worry so much about what's happening on the planet. I, I always feel like if people even knew like a quarter of this information, they'd be so much less stressed, so much less worried about things. I see my internet's cutting in and out a little bit. Am I you're, like you're cutting good. in? Yeah, you're good. Okay, I good. can still hear you. Yeah. What's the, any new information on Atlantis that's coming through right now? Um, you know, right now I'm almost on my third book. So there hasn't been a lot of new information on Atlantis. Just the fact that we're repeating so many different cycles, moving past the cycle. And it seems like we're doing really well that so many of us are back again now and really working hard to redo things from our past and to do things better this time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always get the message all the time that we're doing really well, that everything is right on track. I don't get, you know, we're going to destroy each other. I mean, I, I have heard it's going to be chaotic, but this is all part of our growing process. What's next for you, Sarah? Like, what is, like, where do you see yourself going? Does the higher self tell you, like, what your path is remaining? Like, you've written, what, three books? You're, this is, you're on your well, third Well, I'm book. almost done my third book. Um, and you're teaching classes, right? And you're speaking? I'm not, um, teaching some workshop, workshops, yeah. Okay, you're teaching so. workshops and you're, and you're talking on platforms like Gaia. Like, what's the next thing? I mean, in your path. You know, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think I'll just be pleasantly surprised. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. It's pretty fun. I'm having a great time doing it. And it's really um, fun going to these places and speaking at these conferences and going on Gaia and meeting these amazing people. It's really been something that I never really thought would happen to me. So it's really quite amazing. How'd just that to work watch out for unfold. you? How'd you get on Gaia? Okay, this is really weird, but um, so after I published my book, A Hypnotist Journey to Atlantis, the one that the higher consciousness said that we needed to share this information, you know, through, and as soon as I published it, it just started selling like crazy. Now I self-published it. I didn't do any kind of promotion whatsoever. So how people found out about it, I don't know. And it just shot up to number one on Amazon. And then I got a call from Gaia and I never heard of Regina Meredith. I didn't know who she was. Uh, I had watched Gaia a couple of times before, but for some reason I didn't know who she was. And she asked if she could interview me. And I thought, sure, you know, cause I was, you know, happy to have interviews. So I just published this new book and um, she interviewed me and then wanted me to go on her show. And I asked her, now we've become friends and she's amazing. But I asked her, how did you find out about my book? And she said, oh, I think someone gave it to me. I don't know. I'll find out. So she tried to find out. She asked everybody she could. No one could figure it out. No one knows how she got my book. Still she, does, she doesn't even know how she got your book. No, nope, no. So, the, you the know, universe. yeah. So, you know, I just, I know now, I know my purpose now. You know, I, I think I feel confident in knowing what it is because i know the higher consciousness has an agenda so basically like i i'm not the one that writes these books i mean if you read them it's obvious i didn't write them they're written by the higher consciousness they have an agenda so basically what they do is they use people like me or other people that agree to do something like this like dolores they use this this method of getting this information to the people that are searching for it so I don't, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't, you know, decide this is what I was going to do. I never thought I would be a writer. I really am not the writer of these books. The higher consciousness is they have an agenda and they're getting this information that they feel is very vital to humanity through me publishing them. And then they are the ones that circulate it. I'm just along for the ride, which I have to say is pretty fun. It just seems like, you know, you can have so many fun adventures, like traveling and speaking and visiting sites like Hawaii, feeling that energy, going to Egypt, yeah. looking at, at the, the Sphinx, like just the the information that you receive. Like I was listening to a couple of conversations previously before this interview, 
uh, some of the information that was spoken about the Sphinx and like what possibly may be underneath it, like just kind of like yeah. really stirs the pot for me. Like my curiosity, it's like, wow, what if it really is down there? Like, I mean, we keep finding these artifacts in our, in, on the planet that are just, you know, they're pushing back the, the clock as far as like, you know, our evolution or, or how long we've been here on this planet. And it's, so it's like, it's not, you know, we, I'm sure like there's, there's gotta be some evidence like somewhere in there. Right. Like of like oh, our I'm original sure beginnings. Is. Right. Like oh, um, sure. that's the magic part of it. Right. Like that's the magical part of it. It's like the, well, you know, will we ever know? Like, I don't know. Oh, I think so. But I'm really excited about uh, sharing the more information about the Sphinx at the Conscious Life Expo. The, I'm speaking there in February, and I'm going to do a presentation just on the Sphinx. That's awesome. That is awesome. I got to pick up that book. Sarah, how can people connect with you? How can they reach out if they want or find and buy your book? <clears throat> um, you can go to my website at theholistichypnotist.com. Um, uh, both books are on Amazon right now. A Hypnotist Journey to Atlantis and A Hypnotist Journey to the Secrets of the Sphinx. And my third book should be out within the next month, hopefully. Well, I can't thank you enough. This has been so fun. We're, we're going to have to have you back on because uh, I think it's the universe's plan to get this out. And, and having you on the show has just been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.